So now that I've got all the parts cross cut and rip cut the size, what I want to do is join it all together. So the goal today is going to be to join all these parts together so we create the shell just like what we saw in the mock-up. Alright, so I'm going to go do that over there and I'll bring in the camera so we can explain a couple things about setting up the bevels and then just go crank through all of these. So when I did these joints on my mock-up, I numbered them by the triangle number that's being used to cut the miters. So what I did is on my setup block, I wrote down the triangle numbers for a joint. Like three, four is basically one of the unique joints and that's going to be one of the unique bevel angles. So this one here is labeled three, four, gives the angle is 21.871 degrees. So the, the problem with all these angles is they're all really kind of close to 22.5. So you hit the positive stop on the fence of the domino. And that can make it a little bit awkward for getting a really clean setup. Now I don't like relying on the fence that's on the domino here just because you know, it's got some pretty good markings, but you're never going to get to that type of a precision. And honestly, I don't know how calibrated that is. So I've never checked it. I know 90 is fine, and I know all the way up is fine. So what I like to do, though, is run these blocks through the table saw to set the bevel that I really want. And then, you know, it makes it a whole lot easier. And since I already had the blade at one point or another doing these cuts at the right angle, it was really easy to pop the setup block through and then mark it. Now, one of the catches is that when the fence is tipped all the way down, the height setting that you have on the domino is accurate. However, as soon as you go to bevel this and the angle changes, because of where the pivot point is on the fence, it actually changes the height from where it intersects the fence down to where the center of the bit is. For an example, when I placed the domino on here yesterday to do the work, I just eyeballed it, marked it, and then took a measurement, and it's 10 millimeters down, I should have had a lot of room with extra meat down here and not have to worry about popping through. But because of that angle and how much more it lets it go down, it turns out that the mortise is actually centered 12 millimeters down from this surface. So that's a pretty significant difference. Significant enough that you can see little marks here of where it got so thin that basically you could poke it with your nail and it went just right through. So I don't want that at all on the curly maple. Now obviously I don't want it to pop through on the curly maple, but there's also another reason why I want a fairly significant amount of meat between the end of that domino and the surface of this. Now, certainly if it got really close, maybe I'd sand it and I'd be burning through and you'd be able to see that. But a bigger concern that I have is that this is all curly maple and any of the curly woods is gonna have this situation. And what that is, is generally the grain is running up and down the board in this case here in this orientation, but the curl is actually end grain that kind of comes up and presents itself to the surface. That's why it looks different. That's why you get the rippling effect. But the problem with that end grain is that when I stick glue in these mortises, is the glue is going to want to wick away. So it's going to wick away down the grain, which is fine if it's going laterally in the board. But because there's going to be curl near that, the end of that domino, some of the glue might get wicked up towards the surface. And that's going to affect the finish later. So... It's not generally a big, huge problem. If you leave a you know, reasonable amount of meat, a millimeter or two, I'm going to shoot for two millimeters at least. But if you get too close to that surface, certainly, yeah, you can get some ghosting of where that domino is simply because of the glue. And I'm probably going to be tempted to use some epoxy for the dominoes that are on the side here. The problem with using an epoxy, though, is at least before you add the thickener, you're going to want to size the joint so you have the nice thin glue. And we'll go over this when I get to that part. But... Epoxy is really like an oil, so when you put that in there and it hasn't been thickened, if there's any grain, it's going to wick into the grain, which is fantastic for making a sized glue joint when it's going laterally, but if it's going to go to the surface, it's really going to present some problems for doing the finish. So that's why I want to make sure I leave enough room. To get myself more registration, because I have such a small surface here on the body of the domino against this block, what I like to do is I like to use this vertical support just going to tip down the fence. Now for the most part, I can do it by just, with the fence tipped down, I can just push the block towards it, and as it tips back, it's going to give me the correct registration. So doing this by hand alone is a lot easier than when you're doing it with the camera. But uh, right now it's pressed up against it. It actually works out kind of well if I do it this way here. <laughs> So I've pushed it very hard against the back base, but when I'm doing this, it's basically keeping that registered nicely. Lock it into place. So now this is ready to go for all the five, six joints, of which I've got two on each level. So I'm going to be able to go through and do six joints, both, uh, both boards for each joint. Now for doing that, all I'm going to do is take a pencil, 
just line this up and mark a pencil line across. Now it doesn't have to be ridiculously straight, it doesn't have to be dead square to the surface, just eyeball it because what you're going to do is when you're lining up the domino to these lines, you're going to use the center of the cursor and you're kind of going to look for where this line intersects this edge. Okay, so let me do these dominoes. Alright, that came out nice and clean. So I might want to tune that angle a bit better because it looks like this one here came out great. When it goes in, there's no there's no nothing wrong with it. So you know what I like about this one here is that I can push it in, I can let it go. And there's no gap out here, and there's no gap on the inside. So to me that says that it's just dead on. But this one here, when I push this in, I've got a bit of a hairline gap in here. I mean a big enough hairline gap. I'm not, I'm not talking of being too picky here. That's too much. Uh, but then, see, I'm going to be getting an exposed crack up here. That's actually one of the benefits also of me trying to use an epoxy for this, is that if I want to correct this, you will be making the domino holes kind of a little bit wider so that the domino could, could pivot in there. In a way, that's what I want. I want to be able to glue it so that it's dead flat, dead flush. And then if the domino isn't touching all the walls, I don't really care because the inside is all end grain anyway. But what I'll be doing is if I use an epoxy, first I'll size it with a thin epoxy, and then I'll be putting it in with like a 404 filler in it, and that'll make just an absolutely rock hard joint, especially because it's got tenon in the middle of it. That's one joint, you know, mirrored. So one box. I've done two of them now, and then uh, on all three of them. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll just turn off the camera, and I'm going to go do number two because I'm bu building a second one of these. So I don't want to have to reset all this. So I'm just going to go do that one in between, and then go through all the rest of the joints, and then we'll put it together for a nice dry fit and see how it looks. So there's the pile of parts with all the dominoes. There's 246 mortises in here took me, after I stopped doing the recording, which I did actually do one joint through three sets of boards, uh, the rest of them were all done in two hours, so. And uh, I, can, I can assure you I wasn't going that quickly because it's a little over 90 in here today. So uh, every now and then you gotta go in the house and uh, cool down for a bit. But overall, it went very, very smoothly. So here we have the dry fit, all ready to go with two dominoes per joint. I ran out of 530 dominoes, so I just put two per joint to be able to see how everything fit. And I'm very happy that, you know, there's no gaps anywhere. I'm not having to fight any of the joints. Now, I didn't have to remortise any of the holes, so every time I set the fence setting, I was really cautious to make sure that there was no light when I was looking at the block, when I was setting that fence, and really cinched down on the fence. So all of these came out just perfect. In fact, the only one I messed up was the MDF one I used on the demo with the camera, which is always the case. So now at this point, I'm leaving this as a dry fit. We can't assemble this yet because I still need to build a drawer webbing that's going to go on the inside. And then of course there's going to be the top panel and the bottom panel on that. So all of that's going to get made and then everything gets assembled all at the same time. So in a way we're going to have a bunch of pieces lying around until the last moment and then suddenly everything comes together. And then we'll make the drawer that goes with it. But then there's actually a lot of other things to go along too, like the rods and then the column and then there's, oh, it's a lot a long way to go. So I do have to apologize that this video took so long since the last video. In fact, this one was recorded basically two days after the previous one was released, but it's been sitting on my disc for five weeks because I got thrown into a tailspin with work. So I've been working 70 to 80 hours a week on a ridiculous project, but uh, it, it, uh, pays, it pays for this type of stuff. So I guess I can't really complain and you know, not being in a 90 degree shop is not a bad thing either.